Hey, welcome to Crossroads. In this episode, we'll be talking about the alternative methods of taking away your guns or restricting your ability to get them or ammunition. Because, folks, as the Supreme Court has issued rulings to defend the Second Amendment rights of American citizens, making it so that all gun laws need to be interpreted with the original intent of the Founding Fathers, the Biden administration and the Democrats are looking for alternative methods of restricting firearms, roundabout ways of doing it. Now, a newly drafted document aims to restrict private sale of firearms, while others push to, for example, place new restrictions on your ability to buy ammunition, and there are many things like this. Epic Times had this story. It says President Joe Biden's administration has drafted a document that would require background checks for all gun sales, even transactions between private citizens, according to a whistleblower group. It says the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the ATF, drafted the 1,300-page document which provides legal justification for a proposed rule that would require background checks for all gun sales. Everything! And it's called the, this is according to the Empower Oversight Whistleblowers and Researcher, uh, Research. Now, the document that was drafted allegedly by the Obama, sorry, by the Biden administration, maybe the same thing, at the direction of the White House, according to the two whistleblowers who communicate with the organization, this is what it is. But it says that according to Empower Oversight, their letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland, head of the U.S. Department of Justice, the rule proposed in that document represents an overreach of executive branch power. And this is the argument for it. I'll give my take. They say such an expansive rule that threats that treats all private citizens the same as federal firearms licenses would circumvent the separation of powers in the Constitution, which grants all legislative powers to Congress while requiring that the president take care of the laws be, that the laws be faithfully executed. In other words, they're suggesting that Biden is overstepping his constitutional powers by bypassing Congress to push something that probably would not make it past Congress. Now, remember that Barack Obama kind of ruled by executive order, mainly in his second term in office. He was issuing executive orders, and many people said he was doing that to avoid Congress because at the time, Republicans controlled Congress. Obama wouldn't be able to do anything otherwise, and so he found a roundabout way to govern by decree. Biden, interestingly, is alleged to be planning to do this with firearms. They note further in, to the extent that such a rule prevents the private sale of firearms, it would also clearly violate the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, which declares that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, it's an interesting move right now because if you remember, the U.S. Supreme Court, the law of the nation, recently made the determination that all gun you know, laws in the U.S. need to be interpreted through the lens of the founding fathers. The, <clears throat> the nature of how guns and gun laws were interpreted in, in the time of the founding of this country. And of course, if you go back then, what was the standard? Well, it was these laws, these rights shall not be infringed. The founding fathers essentially believed there should be zero restrictions on firearms. And any kind of restrictions of any type would be deemed unconstitutional were that the case. Now, of course, the interpretation as time has gone on as well, there are new types of guns, there are automatic weapons, there's artillery, there's cannons, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Do we let them have it? Well, in the time of the Founding Fathers, yeah, you could actually own artillery and cannons. In fact, that was one of the big challenges Texas had when they said, come and take it to the Spanish government at the time. Now, given all of this, though, what does this represent? What you're seeing is an attempt to regulate the ownership of firearms by going after things that do not direct, include the direct ownership. Because the Constitution, the way it's being interpreted, right, the way that it's being manipulated right now, the Constitution says that you can own them, but the government is saying, well, you can own them, but can you buy them? You can own them, but what about the ammunition? You can own them, but maybe we can require you to have background checks. You can own them, but we have to have a registry if you own them. You can own them, but we will heavily tax the companies that manufacture them. You can own them, but we can try to shut down the businesses that provide them to you so that it's more difficult to get them. You see where it's going? 
And so all the areas surrounding the issue of ownership are being attacked through different forms of laws. And this roundabout way is the method currently being used to try to restrict the ownership of firearms. This indirect anti-gun approach. I'll give you a couple examples of this. Now, this is actually part of a broader agenda. We just talked about, of course, the rumors the Biden administration is drafting this legislation. I think it's probably true. Well, it's, I guess it's not legislation, but let's go through the legislative branch, probably an executive order. But right now, gun restrictions that focus on things other than the guns themselves, this is the tool being used. You can take, for example, one part of this, the push to restrict guns by forcing people to take classes to get the permits. Now, a lot of people would say, well, what's wrong with that? Uh, if you're going to own a gun, doesn't it make sense that you'd take a class to know how to use it? You know, you want to make sure that you know how to clean it properly, that you know uh, where the safety is, that you know how to ratchet it, and so on. You know, just basic tutorial type stuff. Well, fine and dandy, right? People should have an idea of how to use a gun, in my opinion. But the issue is, because in some areas they've placed the licensing of these trainers under the state, they've found that they can restrict the purchase of firearms by limiting the number of trainers that they allow to be you know, operating. Washington Examiner said this, A national group that champions concealed carry rights warns, warned of a growing effort to limit the distribution of permits to carry firearms on Wednesday, says the U.S. Concealed Carry Association for Saving Lives Action Fund told Secrets that it has started a campaign to stop states from using backdoor tactics to make getting permits harder. It says the campaign is focused on a Virginia lawmaker's proposal to remove the U.S. Concealed Carry Association and National Rifle Association as the groups in charge of safety education classes required to get a permit. In other words, these private pro-gun organizations that currently are able to, you know, hold classes to get you your permit, they're trying to make it so it's no longer under them. Instead, it says, the proposal from Democrat Senator, uh, this is Dan Helmar, would put the state, uh, Democrat state, Del, uh, Dan Helmar, sorry, would put the state government in charge of the education curriculum. So are you getting that? Rather than have it being run through these external private organizations, they want to have the government in charge of the curriculum and notably in charge of the process. Now they note that a similar setup to this in California has led to a dramatic cut in the number of permits issued because the state cut the pool of instructors according to media reports. And so in other words, the state says, well, you know what, we can't have these third-party organizations determining what the safety standards are. This needs to be regulated. We need to make sure people are being taught properly. So the state should manage it. The state manages it, and what do they do? They make it so that they only have a few instructors. So there's a very long waiting line. And by regulating that waiting line and regulating the amount of classes they give and regulating the number of people who can attend those classes, they're then able to regulate the flow through which people are able to get concealed carry permits. By regulating the process, they regulate the firearms, you see? Now it says the group said the legislation would create a backdoor to restricting access to concealed carry permits, placing politicians in full control of how Virginians can exercise their fundamental right to self-defense. And there's more. There's also the other big restriction which is coming down the pipeline right now, which is, well, they can't ban the guns, but, well, what about the ammunition? And you do see some issues with this already. Democrats were pushing this very hard across the country. In California, they tried even making background checks to buy ammunition. Okay, you know, so we can't do this whole process to buy, you know, have you buy guns, but what about we create the same type of process you would need to buy a gun if you want to buy ammo? And, of course, the Supreme Court struck that down just recently. But they're finding as well, well, we can't go after that. We can't require American citizens to have to go through the entire background check process and everything else to buy some ammunition. But what if 
we make it harder for the businesses that sell ammunition to operate? What if we regulate the licensing for the businesses? What if we make it so that it's harder for them to find the materials needed to manufacture the ammunition? What if we make it so they can't manufacture ammunition and they have to shut down and they have to go to external companies in other parts of the world to buy it? What if we do that? Well, that's part of what they're doing right now. Fox News says that every Republican attorney general in the country blasted the Democrat counterparts for attempting to shutter an ammunition factory in Missouri, a letter sent to the White House Wednesday revealed. In a letter obtained exclusively by Fox News Digital, all 28 GOP Republican attorneys general asked President Biden and White House Op Office of Gun Violence Prevention Director Stephanie Feldman to discard their Democrat colleagues' request to end commercial sales from Lake City Army Ammunition Plant, one of the country's largest ammo manufacturers. It says Democrats had previously asked the administration, the Biden admin, to investigate the contracting and manufacturing practices of the plant after the New York Times report alleged that the military-grade rounds were sold commercially and were connected to mass shootings. But the Republicans say the Democrat letter contained a litany of errors. And folks, what is a military-grade round? How do you define a military-grade round? And when have military-grade weapons or ammunition ever been restricted in the United States? Keep in mind, at the time of the Founding Fathers, the muskets they used were very much military-grade weapons. The musket ammo was very much military-grade ammunition. And of course, military uses a whole range of ammunition and firearms, including not very good ones, frankly, depending on which country's military you're talking about. And, of course, even if you go by era, different eras of firearms, you could argue that very old guns are military guns. You could argue that a musket is a military rifle, technically. You know, these muzzle loaders with black powder, you could say, oh, that used to be a military weapon. It's a military weapon and we can restrict it. And they're using this narrative, pushed by uh, the greatest disinformation outlet there probably is, New York Times, in order to frame this. Now, they say this in the letter, say perhaps those states should focus more on prosecuting crime to stop mass shootings, because notably a lot of mass shootings happen in no gun zones, rather than trying to stop lawful Americans' use of guns and ammunition. Their tactic is an overt attempt to punish Americans' exercise of their Second Amendment rights. And this is according to these GOP attorneys general. Now, notes that among the list of errors, because they said there's a litany of errors that they pointed out, and they, they said this, they say the Democrats allege that ammunition manufactured for military use does not belong in communities. And again, how do you say what, a, what ammunition manufactured for military use is? How do you begin to define that? Because again, they use a very broad list of, you know, they, they use a very broad range of ammunition in the military. And of course, this has never been an issue of restricting them in the past. This is the same narrative they use, by the way, to try to restrict assault rifles, which is not really even clearly defined, by the way. The nature, the, the nature of the narrative, assault rifle, is merely a media narrative and a political narrative. It does not have actual tangible features, at least not until very recently when the left has been forced to say, well, what is an assault rifle? Um, they're using the same narrative, military-grade rifles in Americans' hands in order to restrict ammunition. Military-grade ammunition in Americans' hands. And guess what? Well, in another very odd twist to things, it turns out that the key components for, for ammunition supply is coming from very unlikely sources. Guess where it's coming from, folks? The key resources that we depend on to manufacture ammunition, including like artillery, are China and Russia. I'll be talking more about the major consequences all of this is going to have on Americans, especially if we don't bring it home domestically, only on Epic TV. So make sure to join us there for the rest of the episode. We'll also be going to questions. The link is in the description below this live chat. Also, did you all see my interview with Dr. Robert Malone yesterday? If not, go watch it after the live Q&A, because we're going to go to that right now. We talked very in-depth about how the U.S. government and corporations working hand-in-hand 
are waging a secret war on the minds of Americans, cognitive warfare. The link to that is in the description and live chat, so make sure to watch it. Now, a quick word from our sponsors before we continue the rest of the episode. For those of you on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, now is the time to make the jump over to Epic TV. We'll be continuing the episode there. I will see you on Epic TV. Experts agree, one of the best ways to protect against financial uncertainty is to diversify your portfolio. Learn how physical gold and silver can secure your retirement funds from today's economic challenges with a gold IRA from American Hartford Gold. You can safeguard your wealth with no penalties or taxes when you transfer your current qualifying retirement accounts. Call now and our precious metals specialists will send you a free information kit, no cost or obligation. American Hartford Gold, a trusted industry leader with an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau, has a five-star rating from thousands of happy clients. Whether you are getting physical precious metals in a gold IRA or delivered to your doorstep, we offer only the highest quality gold and silver. For your peace of mind, we also offer a no-fee buyback commitment, a low-price guarantee, along with free shipping and free insurance. So don't wait. Call the number on your screen today and secure your financial future.